Before the episode, we have a couple of announcements for you. One, we want to thank our Patreon supporters of the week. So thank you, Gabby, Jillian, Virginia, Jill, Victoria, Teresa, and Heidi. We really appreciate you. And if you want to join them, you can head to patreon.com slash sartorialgeek. That's how we pay for things like editing this podcast and keeping the website going and funding the magazine because believe it or not, uh, paper magazines don't make a ton of money. So if you want to see what's happening at the Sartorial Geek Keep Going, you can head to patreon.com slash sartorialgeek and we will love you forever for that. Hey, welcome to the Sartorial Geek Podcast. I'm Jordan Ellis of Jordan and Danae, and I am here with Lindsay Smith from Serial Box. Hi, thanks so much for having me, Jordan. Yeah, this is actually, we're going to be talking to a couple people from Serial Box, which I'm super excited about, but this is this is the first intro um, to what Serial Box is, which is very, very cool and exciting. Yeah, um, and every time it seems that we announce a new project with Serial Box, that's the number one question we get, so... <laughs> It does yeah, take a little it is also funny <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who like is hearing this before seeing it. It's cereal like, not breakfast right. cereal. Cereal like a cereal. Right. I feel like I always thing. have to spell it out for people, but yeah, S E R. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so you're a series writer, writer there, and you said you've been around since the beginning of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they founded Serial Box. Um, I want to say 2014, and I was the showrunner on one of the launch titles, um, "The Witch Who Came in from the Cold." But basically, what Serial Box is, um, they're aiming to be like HBO for fiction for prose text. Um, so each week with a serial, they'll put out a new episode that you can either read in text format or they have audiobook that releases simultaneously with it. And it's supposed to take like about as long as a TV show to read or listen to. And then it'll update weekly until that season is done of the show. That's so cool. So it's like, I feel like it's sort of like a podcast slash audiobook slash binging. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like all of those things combined together. Yeah, you can certainly wait to binge on it. Um, or you can get like a season pass uh, to read as it's updating or just by the individual episodes. Um, it's such a cool format to work on too. Um, I come from writing novels primarily in comics a little bit. Um, but it's just been so fun to have these big writers teams where we all get together and build out these seasons. Um, and just getting the response from readers as they go through it episode by episode is really, really fun. That's so cool. And the things I was like, you know, scrolling through the website before, uh, we started chatting and, um, before, like getting ready for uh for this interview series and it seems like something really cool is that like it seems like it's like more for fans like it, some of them are like stories that fans are already familiar with and love and they want like more of and so this seems like a cool way to get like even more content than you could from just watching tv or like just um just like checking out movies or comics it's like a like fans always want extra. Right. <laughs> and like that's and what's so cool about this. As a big this. fan girl, I know I always do too. So I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've just recently started getting into IP work for existing um, different properties. So I think Orphan Black is actually going to be the very first one that launches, which is really oh, cool. cool to be able to say. Um, but then they also have four different Marvel um, serials that are coming out, I believe, either at the end of this year or early next year, I'm writing for the Black Widow one. Um, and then there's also, so cool. I think, Thor, Black Panther, and Jessica Jones. And then they just announced. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I'm so I know, excited. I know. It's going to be amazing. Um, and then they just Those announced are... um, The Flash, too, I believe, for DC. Oh, my gosh. Those are, like, some of my favorite <laughs> you know, characters and stories, so that could not be more They awesome. picked just, like, the perfect array of Marvel characters, I thought. And I'm just such such a Black Widow fangirl that it's really, really exciting to be the lead writer on that and get to shape that story. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. Yeah. So how, so, like, how... How long is each, is it called a series or is it, is it called a serial? Like how, 
how long is each story typically, or are they very depend on um, like what it is? So the individual episodes, they try to stay around a consistent length because we want it to be as accessible as like popping in an episode of a TV show. Um, cool. But the different serials themselves will vary in length. I think they just wrapped up the fifth season of a serial called Book Burners, which was also one of the launch titles along with the one that I worked on. Um, and that ran for five seasons and they got a whole really awesome arc out of it and it reached its natural endpoint, and the whole thing is available now to binge. So that's so cool. So it really, I mean this, yeah, this feels very, very similar to like, you know, a Netflix, but like an audio version yeah. of it, which is so cool. Yeah. And just getting it weekly. I, I love that feel of it. You know, it's almost, it, it's just a, a, a really cool feeling because it does feel like when your favorite TV show comes on or when you get an update that the fanfic that you've been following posted or something like that. And I think that's a super cool thing about, so like I have that, I listen to podcasts a lot. That was like the first audio thing I got into before audiobooks or anything but it's nice because when they come out consistently you sort of get your like schedule yeah. so you'll look forward to like you know this morning before on my way like commute to work or like this I'll save it for like this night when I always like want to listen to something new I think that's the coolest thing about like recurring like it's just sort of like a special treat that you know is yeah, coming exactly. every week. Um, and I'll, I'll even have people I know who aren't big readers but who find it really accessible to get into whether they're reading it or just listening to the audio format. Um, it's, it's easy to fit into your life when sometimes for people who aren't big readers, it might feel like a big commitment to go after a, a whole novel. Yeah, I, I talk a lot about how, so I used to commute often, but now I work mostly by myself for myself. So I don't commute right. <laughs> anymore, which it makes it really, really hard. Like, it would be a good thing for me to like schedule out time to read, but like honestly, I just don't. Yeah. So audio books are or audio dramas are so great for me because I can like listen while I'm walking or on the train when I can't really yeah. <laughs> read very often. <laughs> yeah, it is really nice. I love it. So the the thing that I um like the the thing that I found out first about uh, Serial Box is the new launch of the Orphan Black story, which is super cool because I like I am in the fan community a lot. So I have a ton of friends and I, too, was like super, super into the show and then very, very sad when it was over. <laughs> so this is so exciting. And I didn't realize this was the first uh, IP thing like, you know other IP that you guys are working on, which is super cool too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, how did like, how does that feel to be able to like bring back? Oh my gosh. That it's a little scary. Was so sad is over. <laughs> it's a little scary <laughs> because it's such an amazing show and I know the fans are so passionate about it. Um, you know, we get, we've gotten so many wonderful though, wonderful comments from people who are just so excited to see the story be able to continue and knowing that we're able to bring that to them just feels wonderful. Um, That's so like, cool. especially because, you know, all the shippers, the Cosima Delphine shippers, right. especially we're super excited and we're going to feed them well, I promise. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good news for I'm sure everyone who's listening, who is like so excited about Orphan right. Black. I feel like that is the number one thing yeah. most people care about, which is great. Yeah, and we've got a wonderful mix of um, new clones that we're introducing, as well as so many oh. of the old favorites, too. Can you can you give like a teaser of what is happening or like how I guess how much <laughs> can you uh, tease about? Uh, because it it's it's coming out sometime right around when this episode Right. Airs, um, which is so exciting. Yeah. Um, oh, a teaser. Well, it's set um, several years after the end of the show. So everybody's kind of had time to chill and not be chased by crazy corporations or governments for Perfect. a little while. Um, but we start with one of these new clones that I mentioned who isn't aware that she is a clone. Um, and she's actually an operative for the CIA who happens to spot herself 
while she's doing surveillance and lots of interesting Whoa. dilemmas unfold from that. So that's so I think exciting. that's about all I can say. <laughs> no, no, that's great. That's like a perfect teaser to just sort of like set the stage of where the stories mm-hmm. come in. That's so awesome. And Tatiana's back. Right? Tatiana, this- yes. Um, that was one of the hugest things about this was getting her signed on to do the audiobook version. And she's just been so, so, cool. so wonderful with it. Just so passionate. Um, hearing her and seeing her social media and so on, just like hyping up the show and talking about how much fun she's having doing the audiobook is so gratifying. Um, and knowing that she's going to so give awesome. the, the voices to these characters because I can hear them in my head when I'm writing them. But hearing her read it out is going to be something else. And like the the story and the plot of the show was amazing, but like she made that show what it was. So it's so, so cool that she can be a part of of this version of it. I think that's like so. Yeah, I think for all of us, it really felt like a big validation that we were doing the doing right by the show and really. Um, really giving these characters their due because she was so excited about it. And like, I love that too, because, you know, as a fan, whatever, whatever you're a fan of, you're super into, but it's so special when you see the people behind the project or working on the project or in front of the camera be as into it as you are it like changes everything and it's so yeah you just really feel like you're being taken care of you're in good hands you know (laughs) they're going to they're going to give you attention they love it as much as you (laughs) which is awesome (laughs) so can you uh can you talk a little more about what it's like being a series writer on something like this like I think it's always so cool to kind of learn about different jobs and I I honestly have no idea what that's like and it sounds super cool. Yeah well this the serial box process is really fun to work with um basically what we will do is we'll get all the writers together physically in the writer's room for like a weekend a long weekend and we'll come the lead writer will have prepared their pitch for the season um and we take that and we tear it apart and then we rebuild a new right. season <laughs> from the ashes. As every creative project goes. <laughs> um, but we just plot it all out. Um, you know, we go through the story beats, um, break it down into individual episodes, and then also go through the emotional beats. And it's just uh, writing alone by yourself, working on your own novel and everything. Like, that's one thing. And it's really cool because you have total control and so on. But seeing how the other writers on your team will find a solution to a story problem that you never could have possibly come up with is amazing. Um, You really get a feel for where everyone's different strengths lie, too. And it makes you that much more enthusiastic about it. How big is the writing team or is it different depending on each? Yeah. Like... Yeah, it depends for each serial. Um, on the first show, the one that I show ran, The Witch Who Came In From The Cold, we had just four. Um, I'm sorry, five. And we were just like a really tight core group. Um, and then for uh, Black Widow, we've got four and a half. We've got one person who's kind of more acting as an editorial role, which is really helpful um, because there's so much oh, cool. continuity and back and forth with Marvel that we have to go through. Yeah. <laughs> As you might imagine. That's a whole... Because I, I, I know a little bit about comics. I, like, I didn't read them growing up, so I'm like sort of trying to understand everything about comics. Yeah. You know, now <laughs> Same, as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the wild thing is, especially Marvel and DC and the, the worlds and universes that are so big, like there are people who've been following these stories for their entire lives and there are so many yeah. versions and like things you need to know about the characters. And then like, I, I think all of those have had different types of reboots. It, it's so incredible that anyone can keep any of that straight. So I'm glad there's like a devoted person. Right. To that. I, I just imagine their brain is this one giant Wikipedia for it. And it's just, yeah, you, you Absolutely. It, out, it helps so much, <laughs> which is so incredible. Cause that's not how my brain works no, at yeah. all. And so especially, <laughs> yeah, especially when people have their person. And I know black widow is a lot of people's like 
yes. person. Like I have a lot of friends who she is their number one yeah. favorite. And I think they know every single thing about her. So that is going to be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and, and I actually um, have a background in Russian studies. I work in cybersecurity. Um, no way. The Russia threat. I'm a little busy with that sometimes too, when I'm not writing. Um, wow. So yeah, I get to bring that experience to the table. Um, I got to do that for our Cold War one. I get to do it for Black Widow. And now that we've got this cool spy element in Orphan Black, I get to do it there too. It's really fun. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's so cool. That, that makes, I don't know. That's really awesome too, because I feel like those two things don't, line up that right. often so like the fact that someone writing this has like real world right. experience and knowledge has got to make the story so much stronger I which is so. very cool yeah. I, I I can be a little nitpicky um like I, I guess it's kind of like how doctors can't watch like hospital tv shows or something. I was just thinking that. <laughs> that's great though because it's so frustrating when you are in an industry and you're like oh my god didn't they do any research right. like everyone knows <laughs> that's not how this goes so that's so great that you can yeah. do that like it makes it feel so much more yeah. real <laughs> that's so cool how many stories have you worked on at serial Box? um that'll be the three so far um Sweet. Yeah, we did two seasons of which um, that that was a really fun series too, and it's still up there. I think they might even have a special going on right now with the season one of it. I'm not sure, um, but that's like a Cold War spy thriller that also has paranormal stuff going on, uh, set in the 1970s. Oh so it was very near, near and dear to my heart. Um, but yeah, these these will be the new ones for me. These IP projects. That's so cool. I am really excited because I, so I guess it's not really a spoiler. I hope everyone has seen Endgame. If you haven't, I guess <laughs> stop listening for a second. But I remember after Endgame, so many, you know, Black Widow fans were like, yeah. I'm so sad. It ended like that. I know she's getting a movie. And then kind of, I feel like with Orphan Black, it wasn't as like, I am so sad, like, I feel like my character didn't get justice, but it was just like, I'm so sad this right. is over. I feel like, I feel like this episode is such a fun, like, hey fans, good oh, news, right. <laughs> the things you love aren't over, and more things are coming, and it's so exciting. Yeah, I actually had a um, deadline for my first episode for Black Widow, like, the week after Endgame came out. <laughs> So oh like gosh. I was, I was gonna go I sat in the theater and I watched the movie and I was gonna go start writing my episode the next day I, I just couldn't <laughs> I had to like yeah. get through my emotions first and then oh my I channeled gosh. all my rage and Natasha feelings into the episode so which is perfect because that's like exactly the emotion you want right. going into a story <laughs> like that which is so oh, great it's like, this really is Do like you, <laughs> yeah yes but like legit, legit. Like in a different way. Right. I mean, fanfic is legit in its own way, but this is this is really cool. That's so awesome. Um, when did you say the Black Widow series is coming out? Um, I think we're looking at early 2020 right now. Okay. Um, I think the Thor one is going to be the first one out, and that might be this fall. That's so cool. Yeah, that's so awesome. Do you have can do you have a favorite serial or like a a favorite? one to point people Ooh. to like they're the first one they should start with or um, is that like choosing a yeah, favorite it really is <laughs> um, <laughs> book burners is really great just because there's so much story there that you just can really immerse yourself in not only that world but what this cereal box model is like and you're like okay i totally get this now um what can you give like a, a brief yes overview of what that um, one is yeah like. it's um artifact hunters um finding like items like demonic possession items and so on for a secret organization within the vatican Whoa. and there's lots of weird paranormal stuff and political intrigue and so on that happens as you might imagine that's so awesome yeah <laughs> that's great <laughs> um and um, then they just launched cool. one that i'm i've only dipped into a little bit but it's basically in the um, lit RPG format, if you know what that is, okay. which is um, kind of almost like a modernized version of Choose Your Own Adventure. Yeah. So it's like a video game 
story that's got weird cyberpunk elements going on to it. Um, and you can kind of direct the shape of the story too, which is really cool. And I feel like RPGs are, I mean, I don't want to say they ever stopped having a moment, but I feel like they're really having a moment yes. now. <laughs> which um, is wonderful. All the people, yeah, all the people like me who like sort of forgot about yeah. them for a while, <laughs> which shame on us, are like coming back to it, which is great. Uh, so that is super cool. Yeah, like I went through all of college not being able to find a and d group and it was really sad. And now it's everywhere. Oh my gosh. I, I keep thinking about that. I just started playing... Like, uh, actually, I think exactly a year ago. And I'm lucky enough that I can play every week oh, wow. now. But I was like, where was this in college? Like, I had so much more time. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so much closer to everyone I was friends right. with. It's, like, very hard to do it as an adult. And I'm very sad. I, I, I don't even know if I really knew what it was yeah. then. And now there are, like, so many podcasts and everyone's talking about it yeah I, I got to play a little bit in high school um but now now that everybody is so excited about it we can convince our friends to play with us but yeah. <laughs> now it's the scheduling because we're all grown-ups and sad yeah that's the hardest part it really is but it's so cool like it's so cool now having like a little more money than I did yeah. when I was younger I could like cool dice and like have all my figures. Oh my so that's, yes. that's the only great thing about playing as an adult. You sometimes have a little more resources to make yeah, it. Yeah, nobody awesome, can tell you not to buy like the five thousand stucky keychain off of Etsy totally. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I every time I go to a Comic Con, I end up <gasps> getting some new. Oh my god! Either set of dice or like accessory. I got a really cool like hex case Ooh. to carry all my dice last Ooh, those weekend. Are great, yeah. Uh, I've never seen them before. And then I also got, <laughs> it's this like, you you can build this little catapult and then you can like use that to oh roll your God. dice. I just, it's so crazy. Oh I've never God. seen it before. It was $5 and you just like build it out of balsa wood. It's so cool. <laughs> and then you can launch um, it at your DM if they kill your character. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> totally. Oh man, that's so, I, I love... I love finding like a whole new thing that I didn't know about. So yes. when I heard about Cereal Box um, a couple of months ago was the first time I like really heard about it because I just recently started getting into more audio things. It's like this whole new world of things that I am already going to love, which is yeah. so cool. Yeah, I'm so happy to have gotten to work with them for so long and really see how they've expanded and the types of stories they're focusing on. Um, I think they're doing a really amazing job and they get amazing talent to the writers that they pull in. I mean, <laughs> not to, to my own word, but, no, but you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be working there this long if that wasn't true. So like, I think that, I think that's a great thing right. to say. It's like um, my first year, like, it was teamed up with all these like Nebula award winners, like Max Gladstone, wow. like Sandra Rose Clark. I was just so intimidated, and now it's like, okay, well, I can, I can, I can hang with you guys now a little. Yeah, and that's great to always be working with like a super talented team, because it's not an easy job. So, like, I think that's how you know stuff like that is possible mm -hmm. when everyone working on it is incredible. That's so great. So I know you mentioned a little bit, but what are the different what are the different ways that people can like join cereal box. You said you can you can like purchase just one of the cereals or you can do sort of a subscription. Yeah. Um, their website is the easiest way or they also have an app for both iOS and Android. And cool. um, you'll just create an account and then you buy whatever it is you want to buy, whether it's a season pass. And then that means you'll automatically get each episode pushed to you as it's released for a given show. That's or you can awesome. go and just like buy each episode individually. Like say you want to try out the first three episodes of a serial or something, you can just go buy those. Um, and then there's the option between getting the um, text version and the audio version, or you can get both for a reduced rate. That's so cool. Yeah. It's, I love how easy that is too. Like, it's not like this convoluted thing. It's basically as simple as yeah, you would yeah. think. Like you can 
purchase it in whatever version works for your life, which is awesome. And the really cool thing too that I've found is that it moves seamlessly between the two, like across your devices or whether you're switching from text to audio, it'll pretty much pick up right where you were. It's, it's pretty amazing how much effort they put into this to make it just so easy to use and just enjoyable. That's yeah. huge because I, I know how frustrating it is when that doesn't happen. I'm sure <laughs> exactly. people have had systems that don't work that seamlessly yeah. and it's so annoying. Yeah, they, they've done a really great <laughs> job with it. Okay. That's so awesome. I'm so excited. This is like, this is, it's so cool to find like a new, like I was saying, a new yeah. thing. Like I, I can't stop saying how cool it is that there's like, I feel like this is everything that fans want, yeah. <laughs> which is awesome. Like a new medium of a continuation of a story from a really talented group. Um, yeah, I and I that. love how much it feeds into just all the new media styles that we've been getting lately, like the different things people are doing with web comics and games and so on too. Um, having this new style of fiction prose reading is, is awesome to have. Yeah. Man, this is so awesome. I'm so excited. Like, I'm just so excited to be, you know, talking more about Serial Box on the podcast, but also I'm excited to dive into, I think, Orphan Black, I'm excited to get more of and to be able to hear Tatiana again, but I'm really excited for Black Widow <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, I, we'll have to keep everyone updated for uh, release dates and stuff when that comes out. Yeah, they were both just like huge properties that I was super into. So now it's like, okay, what am I going to aim at next? Because <laughs> I love both these things. Yeah, that's such a dream. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, what what even <laughs> is left to reach for? That's so, that's so I'm sure awesome. I'll find something, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There are other cool stories out there, but this is like an incredible, <laughs> uh, this is an incredible way to, to launch doing um IP that's already out there. So yeah, rad. and like you were saying, supplementing the existing s- stories and worlds too, because yeah, I the if I'm super into something, I just want more and more of it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, and I I feel like I've had a lot of conversations recently with different. I feel like this year has been a lot of stories. I don't know if ending is the right no, word, I'm but like there. we had, yeah, we had like the season or the the last season of Game of Thrones, and then we had End Game, and some of those things happened in ways that fans were into. And Star Wars is like yeah. the 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 series. I don't know what what is that called? Like the nine episodes. Um, yeah. I don't know whatever what that is. That. Is ending this I know year? It's called like the sequel trilogy, something like that. Yeah. The, yes. So like. All of those things, I feel like I've been hearing so many people talk about fanfic as their way of like getting yeah. more, and that's great. And this is just like another version of that feeling of just like getting more of the thing that you're sad is. Over. Absolutely. And just the different formats too that you can get these stories out of when there's supplementary comic books or having a podcast or audiobook like what we're going to be doing. Um, it's all different styles of storytelling and they just don't feel the same in other medium, other media too. Like that's the thing I love about writing in prose is how, um, how really into the character's head and emotions we can get, um, that you just can't get from like a movie or comic book. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. I didn't think about it that way, but that's so true and really cool. This is like a new version of the character. Yeah. That- we already yeah, love. we're we're like literally sitting inside Natasha's head, or we're sitting inside Sarah, right. and, um, Cosima, and Delphine's head. Yeah, we do have Delphine scenes too. That's great. <laughs> Sorry, that's Spoiler. awesome. No, that's great. That is that is very good news. <laughs> oh man, this is so exciting! Thank you so much for for chatting today and like explaining, you know, what Serial Box is and why why fans will love it and I'm I'm so excited for the stories to come out and like we can talk about it even more That's so yeah awesome. absolutely thank you so much for having me okay I'm so excited that we have a clip from 
episode one of the Orphan Black Serial to share with you guys. Before we get to that, if you want to hear more about Serial Box, subscribe to this podcast. We have more cool things coming up. And if you enjoy what we're doing, if you would leave us a rating or a review on iTunes, that would help us out a lot. Or if you want to go a step further and want to check out our Patreon to help us keep doing the things we're doing, you can head to patreon.com slash sartorialgeek. And of course, to follow Serial Box on all of the social medias, go to serialbox.com and they link out to their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Stay nerdy. And here's that clip. You're not Kasima Niehaus. You're one of them, aren't you? Oh my God. Oh my God. You have to understand. I didn't know. I didn't realize. He was backing away from her now, trying to get behind the desk. Vivi tried to suck in breath. What was he talking about? One of them. Sturgis babbled on. You really look just like her. I suppose that makes sense. He giggled in a truly terrifying way, and Vivi closed the distance until she was in reach of him. Incredible. Just incredible. Sturgis raised a hand as if to touch her hair, and Vivi kicked him. She struck him, hard, just above the knee, and he doubled over in pain, which gave her a chance to put him in a submission hold. Whatever was going on here, she had to know. What are you talking about? What makes sense? Who is Niehaus?